you could have bought this for $45 in November 2023 and turned it into $5,000 in under four months. Did this really happen? Yep, the company, Viking Therapeutics. The reason? Their obesity drug had great phase 2 FDA results. And looking back, this play was a no-brainer, taking into consideration the math, probabilities, along with the sector-specific trends and tailwinds. More on this later. It's actually so fascinating, I've lost track of how many opportunities like these I've missed. Well, duh, it's obviously easy to look back in retrospect. You really are regarded. I was actually doing research on this company before the 100 beggar. But no, that's actually a fair comment. Let me explain my rationale for why I think it's an obvious play in retrospect. And more importantly, what we can take away from this to improve our edge in life and investing. Before we start, a little bit of background to set the context. I was actually doing a fair bit of research on semaglutides a year ago. I knew even back then that the demand for these products from Novo and Lilly were legit. I mean, you don't need a PhD to know this. You could have noticed this by just casually browsing social media. These products were selling like hotcakes and were always sold out. That said, I passed up on buying Novo and Lily because they had ran up massively at that point and I didn't want to chase. What an idiot, right? So anyway, naturally, I went a level deeper and looked into biotech companies with weight loss drugs and trials that's publicly traded. Surprisingly, there wasn't many companies to pick from. Even from a year ago, Viking was a common name that often came up on Reddit threads and articles online. This company wasn't exactly hidden or unknown. I had two main reasons for not investing in Viking at that point. First, although their results from phase one were amazing, they were still a very long ways away from completing their phase two and phase three trials. And number two, insiders were consistently selling shares, which didn't send a strong message to me. All right, now that you have some context, let me circle back and address my earlier comment on why I think this would have been a no-brainer play in retrospect. I mean, sure, at that point, we didn't know how they would perform in their phase two trial. Of course, there's risk involved. Otherwise, just go with bonds if you hate uncertainty. But just look at it this way. Given that the options turned out to be over 100 baggers, it meant we only needed to be right about one out of 100 times on average to have a positive expected value on this play. Let me repeat that. If you thought they had a 1% chance of positive phase 2 results, this play would have still been an overall positive play. Crazy, right? That said, here's my main takeaways from this case study. Number one, if you can spot huge trends, you should write them. For example, if you wrote the EV trend in 2021, no pun intended, you could have made disgusting money investing in Neo, Rivian, Lucid, and so on. Just off of the Tesla hype and the fact that everyone was looking for the next Tesla. Similarly, we should have rode the semi-glutide trend in 2023, knowing that these drugs had printing capabilities that rivaled j printer. This meant looking for the next big weight loss drug. Furthermore, we should have anticipated the narrative of, oh my god, Lily may actually buy them out, related to any weight loss drug with potential. After all, Lily buying out these small biotech companies to continue their dominance in this area would be like us tossing a penny away. Number two, the returns on options can be disgusting if the IV is not pricing in these movements, like in this case with Viking. In fact, I'd argue options is actually the most optimal expected value play in cases like these, meaning they'd be preferable over shares. I mean, think about it. The stock either moons on great trial results, which means the options will moon way more 
or the stock will tank huge on failed trial, in which case the options will also tank huge. Number four, insider selling isn't always a negative. I mean, this was the main reason that stopped me from investing in Viking initially. And number five, you should definitely inverse me for easy attendees.